These caracals have spent their whole life in a cage. Now they've been offered a chance of freedom, but at a price. First, they have to pass several challenging tests. To win their freedom, these cats have to prove that they've got what it takes. The offer of freedom comes from a surprising source, one of South Africa's busiest military airfields. That's our incursion. Eagle beamed the tower, early left, report passing 6,000 foot. Hey, Roger. The airbase lies strategically close to the northern frontier and was originally designed to be well hidden, even from the air. So it was placed in the heart of wild bush country where nature provided the perfect camouflage. For the camouflage to work, some wildlife had to be granted the freedom of the base itself. An unusual challenge for the Air Force commander. At Hoospeit, we are currently busy preparing and supporting our forces, uh, combat ready forces, for a variety of contingencies. We're even preparing for war. Hopefully that will never happen. Then we also, on a, on a daily basis, are doing a lot of flying, force preparation exercises, force application exercises. We are making a lot of noise, we're moving around in the airspace, and we are really interacting with the environment around us. Cobra, morning, sir, line up behind the Dewey Polo. Lining up and standing by for your takeoff clearance, Camelot. Thanks, Camelot. As the Impala jets reach maximum power, the real wildlife is unconcerned. They've seen it all before. Wildlife usually adjusts quickly to repetitive noise. It's the fighter pilots that have the problem. It's dangerous enough up there without anything flying a little too close for comfort. Birds surely is one of the biggest enemies of air crew today and they are constantly aware of where these birds are. The fighter pilots, they look around constantly for enemy aircraft, but also for birds. We've had instances in the past where a bird came right through the canopy, injured the pilot. We had birds that came through the engine, damaged the engine, and the aircraft fell. So we had uh, quite severe losses in the uh, South African Air Force. I want us to remember that uh, we are sharing the same airspace with birds as well. But surely we are the dominant part in this. We are the stronger partner. And the easy way would really be to take a gun, a shotgun, and just to get rid of all the birds. But that would be disastrous for the years to come. So we are really looking for natural ways to control the birds. They're looking for a predator that will keep ground birds off the runway. A predator that has even been known to knock sleeping eagles from their roost. But at the moment, the wild, skillful predators they seek are living in deepest England, in a cage. This family of caracals has never had to catch anything. The mother, Florence, is being given a wash by the most precocious of her male kittens, Bold. In the same cage are Bold's brother, Chance, and sister, Shy. For the kitten's safety, their father, Dougal, has been kept in a separate cage since their birth, on his own. Their home is the Gentleshore Wildlife Sanctuary in Staffordshire, where Rob Smith provides all the creature comforts his clients could wish for. We actually rescued the caracals from a place in London. They were rescued by Wildlink, and they was brought here, and we was going to look after them for six weeks. That was two years ago. <laughs> the idea when we rescued them was always that they went back to the wild. And we got to the stage where it was all set for them to go back to the wild, and we got the vet down to check them over and found out that the female was pregnant. 
Her pregnancy prevented their bid for freedom. But Florence's kittens are now eight months old, and the conditions in this sanctuary are far too cramped. Wild caracals leave home before they're a year old and travel far away from their parents. These kittens are beginning to fret. The transition won't be easy, but it would be unfair to turn down the offer of so much wild African space. And Hoodsprate is no longer just an Air Force base. Its 5,000 acres are officially recognized as a nature reserve. Beyond lies nothing but wilderness, leading all the way to Kruger, the famous national park. We've got the big five right on our doorstep. We've got a variety of birds that you don't get any other places. We've got bushveld, beautiful trees. So it becomes very important to preserve this area. Come, come on. Significantly for our caracals, it also has an experienced wildlife team, led by Major Philip Oosthuizen. This base do have other unique problems or environmental problems that other bases don't have. For instance, animals on the runway, birds of prey in the, in the air. All that environmental issues has to be managed. We try to make use of natural methods to control our problems and to minimize our environmental impacts. In an attempt to test natural control methods, the wildlife team introduced these two captive-born cheetah brothers onto the base. The triple fence keeps most of the biggest animals out, but small mammals and birds continually make it under or over to join the wildlife already inside. The cheetah's role is to control the mammals, but they can't help with the birds. Are our caracals really up to this challenge? Kay Hill, founder of Wildlink, the group which rescued the caracals from the pet trade, has to make the decision for them. We approached the Hoodsbrit Air Force Base in South Africa during a period when we were actually releasing some other cats there with a view to them taking these animals, releasing them into the controlled wild situation. Uh, from our point of view, putting them back into the wild has got to be better than keeping them in captivity forever. It's a decision she is not taking lightly. When you rescue an animal, you become like its mother, totally responsible for the rest of its life. Wild caracals leap for their prey and are said to be among the best bird catchers in the cat family. But do our caracals even know that they're supposed to jump? We're trying to actually give them a head start. We're doing bird catching training within the enclosure with the kittens. Now obviously in the wild, the kittens learn that from the parents. These kittens don't have that opportunity, so we're having to teach them to do that ourselves. to the audience. But not all the kittens want to play games. Yet this first crucial test is one that, like it or not, all the kittens are going to have to pass. One month later, and the whole family has made it past the first hurdle. This is the